Okay, so I'm here to talk about the collection, uh, which I should start out by talking about the collector first, which is very, very easy for me to do because it's fresh in my memory because I actually just watched the collector for the first time last night. If you saw, uh, I, I can't remember what movie it was, it was something that Jillian and I saw and we were talking about the trailers for whatever that movie was and um, the uh, or the trailers that were at the beginning of the movie and one of them was for the collection and I when the collector was out when the collector was out I didn't get a chance to see it like I thought it looked kinda good from the trailer I had actually heard it was pretty good um, and it just came and went uh, it, it might have been in Springfield for, I don't know, like a week. Like, it, it was just here and gone. So I didn't get around to seeing it, and I just kind of forgot about it. So I see the trailer for the collection, and, uh... <laughs> what's the etiquette when your phone goes off when you're doing a review? Um, so I see the, I see the trailer for the collection, and I, they, they're not advertising this thing like a sequel. The name The Collector comes up nowhere in, in any of the trailers for this thing. They're, uh, they're, they're just, th this thing is not advertised like it's a sequel to something. If you've seen The Collector, then obviously you know. But if not, I'm sitting there in the theater when I first saw the trailer for The Collection, and I wasn't really sure what was going on in the trailer. I wasn't really sure who the characters kind of were. And I, I know that that kind of means like, well, that's because you didn't see the first one. But... It wasn't <laughs> nowhere in the trailer did it even hint that it was like a sequel to something, especially since it's called the collection and not the collector two. You know, collector two is kind of a dumb title, but so anyway, I finally got a chance to watch the the first movie, and honestly, I really liked it. I really liked the movie quite a bit. I thought it was a very gritty, suspenseful movie, and um, I liked that uh, it had a good it had a good pace. It had a really good character build up to it because here you have a movie that is essentially a movie about a house burglar who breaks into a torture porn movie. <laughs> I liked that. For the first half hour or so of that movie, you have this guy who's scoping out these rich people's house because he wants to go in there. He's a safe cracker. He wants to go in there and get this this like diamond so he can he can get the money for it and he can get his wife uh, out of her debt. She owes like money to land sharks. So you see this guy's whole story and then he breaks he breaks into these people's house just to, just real quick, goes in there just to just open the safe, get the thing, and leave. But he's broken into a horror film. He's broken into a horror film, like a modern day horror film, already in fucking progress. I liked that. And when done well, that's usually, that can usually be kind of fun, like the From Dusk Till Dawn thing where. You know, it's a bank robbery movie, but they they break into a vampire film. You know, that it, when done right, that that can be really fun. When done terrible, you have it's a romantic comedy, and then it it's a terrible romantic comedy, and then it turns into Birdemic. You know, like it, when done horribly, <laughs> that could go really wrong. Um, but I I do kind of like that. We we even kind of toyed with that a little in the in, in, in our movie. It's like a comedy, but then halfway through kind of goes a little giallo. Um, so that was really, I thought that was a neat idea to kind of play with that, with um, the modern day, I, I don't usually like using this term, but um, the modern day kind of torture porn, gore porn genre. It was, it was a fun, clever way to to, to do that plot, and also while still m maintaining suspense. I thought The Collector was a really suspenseful film, a, 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 with the, the kind of cat and mouse things that are going on in it, with the burglar trying to just fucking hide from The Collector as they're both going through the house, and really good camera angles, like over the wall shots, going from room to room, and then just kind of sneaking through the house, avoiding each other. That was done really well. Um, I liked it. It wasn't 
it wasn't a perfect film. <laughs> like when when he when he when he first like starts noticing that shit is kind of going on in this house, um, he sees like rooms just booby trapped all over the place. And after a while, it got to be a little mo like once it showed. I think once it showed like the spikes all the way up and down the staircase, I was kind of like. That's a little much. Like, between that and, like, the room full of bear traps and the room that was, like, glue acid, there was, like, a room of razor wire and stuff like that. I was watching it like, this is a little much. Why is the killer doing this? Is he expecting someone to break into the house? I mean, the, that most of that stuff actually kind of pays off, especially the bear traps, I mean, because I guess he did it because the the daughter and her boyfriend are out and they come home later and like fall into all these traps. I guess. <laughs> I don't know, but that was, that was pretty good. That was kind of far out, but it does, it did have a payoff. And there were several moments in the movie where the guy had a perfect opportunity to escape and he doesn't. And he just goes back into the house to get himself into even more trouble. I, I like, I know they kind of want to make it to where the guy's like, noble like he hears screams and then goes back in to try to save the person but dude just leave and bring back the cops seriously this guy's fucking crazy he's got a room of fucking razor wire the killer was good too with his fucking glowing like i don't know what kind of fucking eyes those were but that was i liked that uh with his fucking glowing eyes and shit he was creepy um the kills in the movie were pretty good i i did like how in, uh, I'm spending a lot of time talking about the first one. Um, I liked how uh, they made this guy able, the, the main character, uh, Arkin, how they made him um, an expert at breaking into things. He's a burglar, so he knows how to pick locks and everything. So I like that. So several times where he's tied up, he can figure out ways to get out of it, and he gets like some of the victims out of their restraints, which I, I liked that because he kept kind of sneaking in and untying them or undoing their handcuffs but then he would have to hide again and the killer would come back in and the killer at this point not knowing there's anyone else in the house i was only thinking like what's going on in this killer's head is he coming back in the room and they're you know out of their uh gags out of their handcuffs is the killer just in his head like man am i getting really bad at this now how do these people keep getting out of their restraints um and then it even made me, like, uh, when the movie was, was over, and it said sort of who the killer was, that he was like an exterminator. Um, because uh, Arkin mentioned that he had seen him earlier in the movie, so that actually made me go back and say, okay, where, where was he? And I was like, oh, he's probably the guy wearing the gas mask. Uh, so that was, so I, you know, the movie, I liked the movie well enough to do that. Uh, otherwise, I would have been like, I don't fucking give a fuck who was at the beginning of the movie. So, uh, the movie, I, th I thought it was a, I thought it was a suspenseful, well-done flick that put a very clever setup on the modern-day sort of, uh, Saw sequel genre of film. And I know the guy who, um, who directed it, Marcus, uh, sorry, uh, Marcus Durston, is that it? Dunstan, Marcus Dunstan, like, a, I know he's, uh, um, written a lot of the Saw movies, uh, they've been saying that all over the trailer for the collection, I, I think I read something about the collector even being, um, proposed as, like, a prequel to Saw or something like that, well, I'm glad it's its own, it's its own movie, it's its own movie, it, it's, it's better than the Saw, the collector's better than the Saw sequels, but yeah, they, they, that's like all over the trailers. Like it doesn't mention, the, again, the trailers for the collection mention the collector nowhere. I mean, it shows clips of the collector in the movie, but if you haven't seen, you would just think it's just clips from the collection. And uh, it's talked about from the twisted writers of Saw 4 through 7. Because when I think of the writing in Saw 7, I think twisted. Um... And it even says, like, the new face of terror in the, the trailer for the collection. Which, again, led me to think, like, okay, this is some new thing that they're doing. I don't know. But but I watched the tra after I watched the trailer for The Collector, I did go back and watch the trailer for The Collection again. And if you've seen The Collector, the trailer for The Collection makes does make total sense if you've seen the trailer for... Or if you've seen The Collector... 
so I guess now that I've spoken about my thoughts on the first film, I should go into the second one. Um, which again, the, the same writer and same director is, is back for this one. Uh, the collection really sucks. <laughs> the collection is... Okay, I'll I, I, I get into this. Um, whereas the first one was, again, like I said, I thought the first one was suspenseful. I was intrigued by the movie. I, I liked the lead character. I wanted this guy to live. I'm rooting for this guy. It's got a creepy villain, and it's got a good setup and payoff to it. This one, the collection, is just a straight out Saw sequel gore film. Like, I was mentioning about the first one, like me sitting there like a couple of times being like, okay, this is a little much. Like the thing on the stairs and like the room full of bear traps. That's nothing compared to the shit in the second movie. That is minimal compared to the fucking shit that goes on in the second movie. The second movie appears to have a higher budget, which means that the killer in the movie has a higher budget. I think it only takes place maybe a couple of days after the events of the first movie. And, okay, in the, in the second one, it starts out with, um... Like this, uh, at this nightclub. This is, this part's all over the trailers. It starts out at, at this, and this sets, really sets the tone for the rest of the movie. It starts out at a nightclub where I, I don't know if the collector runs it or how he would manage to get in there to do all of this. Is the, is the guy who, who is working the door, the doorman, is he in on this? A trip wire goes off, and this giant, like, weed whacker comes through and just mows everybody down on the dance floor. Just cuts them in half, fucking mutilates their faces and shit like that. One guy ducks, but he gets his fingers cut off. Just mows them down. The, the head chopping machine from Caligula was more believable than this. And one section, like, squashes people, it traps them in a cage and just squashes them. Blades come out of the wall and, like, cuts their heads off and shit. Which would be fine if, if it actually was a sequel to Saw. <laughs> then I could kind of see something like this happening. But coming off of the first film, especially, I just watched it last night... Coming off of the first film, and then seeing this, which the first one was, uh, yeah, it was very gory, but it was suspenseful. It did have a good build-up to it. This one, no. It's like, you can now kind of see the difference where, and I'm not comparing either two of these movies to these two movies, I'm just sort of using this as an example. You know how the initial reaction, and a lot of people even still do feel this way, you know how, but especially back back when these movies came out, how when the original Halloween 2 came out, and it was criticized heavily for being more so just kind of like a generic slasher movie of the day, especially when compared to how spooky the first one was. I'm not saying that The Collector is as good as Halloween, and I'm not even saying that The Collection is like Halloween 2. I'm just saying that that... It sort of reminds me of the reaction to that. You know, whereas you have this very suspenseful movie, and then you have this sequel that isn't at all, and really is just kind of a generic torture film of its day. It's a very generic film. And there's one survivor, there's one survivor in the nightclub thing, and it's a girl who gets abducted by the collector because he always keeps one person, which in the situation like this, it's a good thing one person even survived this lawnmower machine of a nightclub, which wouldn't even be the worst nightclub I've been to, but, so, but he, and, and also the, uh, Arkin from the first film is the, he, the collector, he always has a, a person in a box that he leaves there at the scene for people to see, I guess, um, and anyway, that's him in this one. He's, he's in the box, and he gets away. The girl gets abducted, but he, he, he ends up getting away. 
So the girl's wealthy father sends, like, his bodyguard and their SWAT members, I guess, to, to Arkin to work out a deal with him to break into the collector's warehouse, which is named the Argento Factory. Is, <laughs> is this the second or third, like, Argento mention I've seen in a movie this year? Sometimes it's done right. Sometimes it's Bargento from Paranorman. That was very funny. That movie earned that. That movie really earned that because there were elements of that movie that we, you could say were reminiscent of, uh, of, of, of some of the style of, uh, of some of his flicks. The collection? Uh, not really. <laughs> um, that, that, would be, that would be like if... Uh, if, I, I, I don't know, if in, like, let me look at the wall over here, okay, if in Friday the 13th 3 there was a place called Bar Scorsese, I, I don't know, but, be pretty funny. So anyway, it's the, the Argento factory is where the, see, see, it shouldn't have been that hard to find the killer then. Where do you think the killer's hiding out? I don't know, there's that abandoned factory named after Dario Argento. He might be there. Should we check? So, so Arkin, who's in the hospital, gets out of the hospital, and he goes along with Tobias Beecher from, uh, from Oz. That was pretty cool. I haven't seen him in anything in a while. So Tobias Beecher, he's one of the main characters, uh, Lee Turgeson. And he's, he, again, he's like the bodyguard or something of the rich girl who went missing. So they, they break into the the collector's warehouse, his factory, and it's full of booby traps. It's seriously a Saw movie. And that's the movie, is them wandering around this booby-trapped warehouse trying to find the girl. And there's, like... <laughs> You get, like, body parts all sewn together and shit, put in giant glass tubes filled with water. There's, like, a living doll girl that I guess the collector keeps as his pet. And just all uh, rabid, like, attack dogs and shit, like, rooms that just spontaneously explode. So, they end up going to, uh, Arkin again to find out they walk into the hospital room and Arkin is like is like man I told you everything I know and the guys are like no no we're we're not cops we're we're a private we're we're a private group like we want this fucker we want this fucker bad we and we got to save this girl so that so Arkin knows how to get there he knows how to get there by when he was thrown into the trunk at the end of the at the end of the first one and the killer was driving him to his warehouse he would count to a hundred and make a cut on his arm and then whenever he could feel it turning in whichever direction he would make kind of a a slanty cut on his arm that's how that's how he tells uh, Tobias Beecher how to get there except if he knows how to get there and this isn't a bad guy I mean he's a burglar but he's not like a bad guy or anything. He, he was never, like, a, a villain in any of these. Why didn't he tell the cops this information? He said he told the... Why was he holding back that information from the, from the cops? I don't get that. He wasn't sitting there wanting to go in there and just get revenge on the collector, even though that would make a much better movie. Was he just waiting for Tobias Beecher to come and go, oh, right, I forgot, I actually do know where to find this motherfucker. Fuck, maybe I didn't tell the cops everything. Hang on, give me the phone. I should really tell the authorities where this fucking serial killer is living. It kind of lost me after that, honestly. And whereas the first one really did have good character build-up to it, it did. Um, Josh Stewart, who plays Arkin, he was good, he was likable. There was a good, you knew the motivation really for everything that he'd been doing. Even when he did something where I'd be like, why did he do that? It would still kind of build it up in the sense that you, in, in, um, in the first movie, he obviously likes, he, he has a daughter that he's very close with. And he he obviously likes he like he loves his he obviously loves his daughter and he has a thing he he doesn't want kids to get hurt, 
And so when there's a moment in the first one where he almost escapes but then doesn't because he sees that this little girl in the room, the daughter of the family in the first one, is about to get is probably going to get killed if he doesn't go back in. So he does. While some people might sit there and be like, oh, he should just leave and just bring the cops back. You still get... It, that character was written enough, well enough to where you still kind of get why he did what he did. In this one, he's he's just there. I mean, he's the main character. He's in the whole movie. But he's just there just to say lines like, like, we're in his house now. You better pray he doesn't catch you or you're going to wish you were dead. Um, the doors are closed. We are already dead now. Just really generic horror movie dialogue like that. There's no... The characters are not very well done in, in this movie. Um, I mean, Tobias Beecher is, is kind of badass, but that's just because he's Tobias Beecher. Like, I mean, he was... I was glad that he stuck around for most of the movie. I, I actually would have been kind of upset if they got rid of him, like, right off the bat, but they, but they don't. There's a part where he comes in, and he comes in with, like, the severed head of one of the attack dogs and throws it at the collector and then has a knife fight with him. That part was cool. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that everything about the movie was bad. I, I thought the movie overall sucked. There are good qualities to it. Uh, Lee, it it's fun. It was fun seeing Lee Turgeson in it. Um, really, like... That I I could have that would if he was like just the lead in this, that would have been fine. I, I I really could have dug that like and, and the movie's well made. The guy the guy shoots it well. Um, he 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 has a good eye for he has a good eye for slow motion. He also has a good eye for soundtrack. Um, he he's good with um, with the musical score. And that, I thought that about the first one, too. He, he's got a good ear for putting the right music to the right scenes. Uh, and that, that's, evidence, that's evident here as well. He's, he's not a bad director. Um, it's... The gore was fine. Uh, the, the effects... The gore effects were, were, were fine. Um, it's not a boring film. It's just wildly fucking generic... And especially coming off the first movie, it makes me dislike this one even more. Honestly, if this was a standalone movie, it would have been just generic and I would have forgotten about it. But coming after the first one, which I really did like, I really did enjoy quite a bit, it, it does make you extra disappointed in this movie. And there's another thing, too. This is shortly after the events of the first film... In the first film, you don't see the killer. You don't really in this one too. Um, you don't really see, but you do see in the first one that he doesn't have any hair. That and I don't think the actor who played him in the first one. I don't think he has hair in real life either. At least the pictures of him that I've seen. He's got that weird mask that he just ties around, and you see skull behind him. He doesn't have any hair. Even like at the beginning of the first one where you see that he's got a gas mask on. He, he's bald. He doesn't have hair. In this one, it's a different actor playing him. Okay, fine. You know, the killer just goes around with a mask. Just put the creepy eyes in him. Get someone with a similar build. Okay. Okay, fine. Fine. But whoever they got has, has just a full head of hair. He ties the thing around him, and you see full head, full fucking head of hair behind him. And at, at, there's this scene at the end of the movie where the killer, he gets set on fire, but still managed to escape, and then move 200 miles away, and uh, set up another life for himself, which I would think would be I, I would think that that would be kind of hard because they have to know what this guy looks like now. His name has to appear somewhere. It has to show up in I don't know if he if he rented out this factory. He had his he has his own extermination company. It says that in the first one. So they had to have found out who this guy was. His face should have probably been all over the. But anyway, the. 
So Arkin comes in at the end and puts a gun to his head and says that he's, he's going to torture him and kill him, throws him in the box, bam, movie's over. Honestly, from there, and if, it's, if the movie started there and then, like, kind of kept going, like, now the bad guy is, like, is, like, the victim, you know? That would have been an interesting direction to go with this movie. Like, the survivors, like, doing kind of jigsaw shit to somebody who's, like, jigsaw. That could, I could, that, that would be a much better movie than what this one is. <laughs> and also other things, too. Like, they do such a good job of setting up Arkin in the first movie. His whole backstory, his whole everything. And part of the first one is that he had to get that diamond before midnight. He had to get the diamond and the money before midnight to get the loan sharks off of his wife. I guess the loan sharks just stopped going after, because that's mentioned nowhere in this movie. And it shows the wife in the film. I guess the loan sharks just left her alone, or she was fucking lying and just wanted the fucking money. But that's mentioned nowhere in this movie, so I guess the loan sharks just, like, fucking left her alone, or whatever. Even the guys, even the guy who he was splitting the money with in the first one is nowhere in this film. That is, is like, fucking not mentioned in this. This really is just a generic, probably took them only five minutes to write sequel. I'm not going to say that the movie was unnecessary, because after seeing the first one, I was kind of like, I am curious to see where this goes. This is a likable character. This is a good villain. I do want to see where it goes from here. So I'm not going to say this movie shouldn't have been made. I'm not going to say this movie's unnecessary. But holy fuck, it should have been fucking better. Um, not suspenseful, not scary. It is just a generic, way, way fucking over the top torture film. That's it. That's all the fucking... That's the fucking movie. That's all the fucking movie is. It would be like if that movie, that fucking piece of shit movie, Captivity, was a sequel to Seven. Um, so, alright. Uh, ah, shit. I, I think that's all I got here. I, I don't know how long I've been going, but um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pause here real quick and then uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the trailer. So, I'll see you in a few. Alright, well, I did get some trailers before this, and of course most of them were, were horror trailers. Some of them I hadn't seen. A few of them I, I have. Uh, of course, uh, we got the trailer for, uh, I say we, I should, should say I. I was, I was the only one, I was the only one there at this one, too. I, uh, actually had, um, uh, I had actually asked Brian if he was in, into seeing, uh, the collection. And he actually really wanted to go, because he, he really dug the shit out of the first one. Uh, he was kind of the one who, who, who told me that the first one was really was actually pretty fucking good. I agree. I, I still say that The Collector was really... The, the first one, uh, The Collector was really fucking good. But he the time that I had to go see it, uh, he couldn't make it. But he could have made a later time, but I couldn't, because i got to do a radio drum later. Uh, so anyway, I walk in, and the theater's empty. It's playing at, like, it's, the movie was playing only on one screen, and it was at the theater where stuff goes if they don't really think it's gonna do very well. <laughs> so, I, I don't know, this, uh, the collection might be around for only a week, too, like the first one was here in Springfield. Um, so, like, I walk in, and, like, no one was there. It, eventually, like, a few, eventually, like, a few people walked in. Um... So I sat down, and they give us the trailer for uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Um, Texas Chainsaw 3D. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter what I say out of the trailer. Looks, I'll be there to see it anyway. It looks like the same problem I have with all those other Chainsaw Massacre movies, with the exception of like the first one, and the second one's pretty fun. And McConaughey is entertaining as shit in part four. He's... He's having the time of his fucking life in that movie. And I might think with this chainsaw, is just like, eh, it's the same thing about that Evil Dead trailer, where it's like, it just looks too fucking clean. It's too fucking neat and polished. There's no fucking grit or grime anywhere in it. Just too fucking professional looking. Get the some fucking gritty ass shit, like uh, some gritty, grainy, fucking dusty shit, like uh, the original movie. You know, make another, make another balls to the wall one like that. And this, this, this chainsaw dude just looks too fucking polished. 
Um, hey, but here's hoping the 3D's good. So there was that trailer. There was uh, a new trailer for uh, Bullet to the Head. I'm a, it, it's fucking Sylvester Stallone. Of course I'm going to go see it. Uh, this is a new trailer. Uh, more or less the stuff that was in the uh, the other trailer except they took out like where the guy where his partner says starts trashing like Stallone's taste in music which glad they took that part out of the fucking trailer cuz you have a movie where you have a char where a character says something like um like oh what's this old music you're listening to grandpa or uh we got to get you some new music character ever says that in a movie, I instantly want that character to fucking die. So they took that out of the trailer. Um, there was a trailer for one that's the the Chan Wook Park movie, uh, Stoker, I believe. It was my first time seeing the trailer for that. I watched the trailer for that movie and uh, um, I was watching it just going, I have no idea what the fuck is going on in this trailer, but simultaneously I feel like they're giving too much away. <laughs> Even though I have no idea what the fuck is going on in this trailer, but I'm really intrigued. That actually look that actually looked pretty good. I don't know what the fuck it's about. <laughs> no fucking idea. But I, but but that's cool. That's cool. That means I won't be predicting anything. Um, I also got uh, I I wrote them down here on my phone. We typically get about seven or eight trailers. Uh, that's another thing too. When I left the theater for the collection. It was like 7.30. The movie started at 5. So either either they started the trailers early, or the collection is only 75 minutes long. <laughs> Some fucking movie we got called Black Rock, which looks like... This didn't even look like the trailer for a theatrical film. It looked like a trailer for like... a a made-for-TV movie. It looked like a trailer for, like, for even, like, a pilot for a series. Like, it looked, it looked like something you would see back when, you, back when Lost first got big and you started seeing shows that were kind of trying to ride on Lost coattails for a while, like Surface and stuff like that, which, well, this movie's, this movie's also got Lake Bell in it. Um, it looks like, it looks like if you cross Lost, with Mother's Day. These three girls are on these island with these fucking yokel dumb fucks, and they try attacking one of them, and then the girl fights back, so then the other yokels are, like, hunting the girls down on this island and shit. It, it seriously did not look like a theatrically released film. I don't know how it'll turn out. Maybe it'll be a decent movie. I don't know, but I'm watching this. Like, it looked like what you would get before the actual trailers start. You know, when they would show previews like, uh, Coming this fall, 666 Park Avenue, starring John Locke. Or, Don't Trust the Bee in Room 420, James Vanderbeek. And shit like that. It looked like a trailer you'd see mixed in there with that, before you get, like, the actual trailers. So we got that mixed in, mixed in with all that. And also that, that spoof movie coming out that's not... That's not scary movie. Five. How many scary movies have they been now? Like five or four? Anyway, the movie coming out that isn't like a scary movie sequel, but is totally a scary movie sequel. A haunted house, I think, is what it's called. You know, that spoofs the. It's a found footage spoof that spoofs the timeless classics like The Devil Inside. Yeah, you think, yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, spoof the fucking, spoof the fucking devil inside. That was, yeah, people fucking remember that shit after they saw it. I, the only, th the only thing that makes me remember the devil inside is just that piece of shit ending. And that's not what they're spoofing in the trailer. They're spoofing, like, the part with the cutting on the arm and shit. Like, oh, right, that was a scene from that movie. Because it was so popular and I totally remember it. Um... It, it, and I, I'm like, it, it's, it's written and starring, uh, it's written by and starring Marlon Wayans, and I, I, I'm not, I'm not sitting here like, like, oh, you can't spoof, you can't spoof found footage movies, or, like, man, spoofing found footage movies, that would be kind of hard. I'm not saying that, you could probably do a pretty funny spoof of, uh, of found footage movies, but I don't really watch found footage movies and be like, man, 
This is really scary, but you know what would make this funny? What if they just fucking fart? Dude, seriously. If she just fucking... If, if Katie just fucking farted, like, farted so hard that, like, the sheet raised up off her ass. Dude, isn't that fucking hilarious, man? Dude, we gotta make this fucking movie. Alright, we gotta make our paranormal fart movie. Par we'll call it paranormal... We'll call it... We'll call it Paranormal Activity Fart 2. Dude, just okay, uh, throw in the farts, man. Farts bring in some money. Let's throw in, um... Let, <laughs> Let's throw into let's throw in some references to that to that awesome award winning movie The Devil Inside, dude. Totally. Anyway, it looks like shit. And let's put the let's get the scary movie guys involved in this, cause, dude, come on, it's a spoof movie. It doesn't matter what we're spoofing. It's got to be a stoner flick. There's got to be marijuana dripping out of the lens of this fucking movie. <sighs> so that movie looks that movie looks kind of bad. Uh, that that was that was basically it. Uh, my my final thoughts, at least at least I think that was it. I think that was all the tra I think that was all the fucking trailers I got for this thing. Yeah, yeah. At least, at least it's the ones I wrote down. Um, well, my final thought on the collection is, it's not a good fucking movie. Watch the first one. If you haven't seen the first one, I highly recommend it. Just turn out all the lights, turn your sound way fucking up. Make sure you're watching it on a big fucking TV. Dude, you'll have a killer fucking night watching the first flick. The first one was solid. The first one was good. And it deserves a far better sequel than something like The Collection. Than something so, so generic like The Collection. Like, you could seriously just... Just show this movie to somebody, not tell them anything about the collector, and you could you could tell them that this is a sequel to Saw. You could tell them that this is just a Saw sequel, and you know what? They will probably believe you, because I'm sure that if you put this film on a TV next to a TV showing like the most generic of Saw sequels, like Saw Five. You know what? They probably sync up, sync up pretty fucking well. It's not. It, it's just not a very, very good movie. It is a disappointment. And again, like I said, I like the first one. I didn't go into this thing wanting to hate it, wanting to be disappointed by it. I wanted it to be good. It wasn't. I believe that's all I got. I think that's all I got. So. uh... Not 100% sure what comes out next weekend, but whatever it is, I'm sure I'll be there seeing it. So, I'll see you guys later.